on this week's installment of All Elite Elementary, after Principal Khan suspended Matt, Nick, Kenny, and Phil from school, their parents are now threatening to sue the school and the school district, so they haven't been allowed back into the classroom yet. But this week, it was Sammy and Manny who got into a fight on the playground at recess. Manny is said to be trying to get expelled so that he can go back to his old school, the one that he told his parents to take him out of before. He wants to go back because that's the school that Ashley attends. He and Ashley have been going steady for a while, and he just hates being away from her. But Principal Khan is hip to his plan. He has no intention of letting Manny change schools. He sent Manny home and will force him to be homeschooled before he ever lets him transfer. The school's already lost Malachi and Buddy. Nobody seems to know where they are. They may be out with the flu. Nobody knows. But Darby is still there. He's doing skateboard jumps off the roof. And his dad, though, Steve, is trying to get him to stop. Saved by the Bell ain't got nothing on this shit. Tony Khan is going to have to invest in armed guards at all AEW shows going forward if this keeps up. Another fucking backstage altercation. This time... At Dynamite on Wednesday. This was the anniversary show, no less. Dynamite's three-year anniversary. It's supposed to be a celebratory occasion. And it just illustrates how much things have changed from that first show. And not in a good way. So, to understand how we got here, we have to take it back to a sit-down interview that Andrade El Idolo did with Masalucha in Mexico City. He was talking about how much he hates gossip before proceeding to gossip about one of his colleagues. You can't make this shit up. He said, Gossip pisses me off. I've never had any problems or fights with anyone. Can't say that anymore. I know something happened between CM Punk, Kenny Omega, and the Young Bucks, but I'm fine with them. They've always treated me well. They've been good to people uh, with me, or they've been good people with me. I have only had a problem with a wrestler that I am not going to name. Well... I'm going to say his name. Sammy Guevara. I had a problem with him. He went into the locker room to say that I hit him very hard. Wrestling. It's wrestling. He said that I hit him very hard, that I hit him a lot. No. Only that it's wrestling. You deliver yourself up in the ring. If I hit you hard, then you hit me hard. Then I found out that he accused me like a little girl. Afterwards, I spoke well with him without fighting. I asked him if he had a problem with me, and he said no, and that's it. I mean, I spoke clearly with him. He told me he had no problems with me, and that's it. We didn't get any further. That was the only altercation I've had, because not even in WWE. People say, oh, they don't even hit each other in WWE. Of course we did. Sheamus is a fighter. My respect to him. He loves to hit. He loves hitting people. Even The Miz himself likes to be stiff. (laughs) I laughed the other day when I read that. I still get a smile on my face just thinking about it. I cannot get over that one. Maybe, maybe those yes kicks to the chest. Maybe he really stiffs the shit out of his opponents with the yes kicks. That's the only thing I could think of. The idea of The Miz having a rep for being stiff in the ring is hilarious to me. The only person Miz is being stiff with is Maurice. I don't see this uh, stiffness in the ring that uh, Andrade is talking about here. But he says, if not even John Cena said anything or complained that I hit him hard when we wrestled, imagine this guy who is just starting in the business. I will say no more. So in one breath, he says he's not going to name any names, and then he names names. So that's what got this snowball rolling down the hill. Then on his status with AEW, he had this to say. My status currently in AEW is difficult. My hunger for victory does not end. I was in WWE and I had a very big contract. They offered me a better contract so that I would not leave, but I wanted to continue growing and that's why I decided to go to AEW. But right now I feel like a little bit stuck in AEW. I feel like I want more. I feel like I'm going through what happened in WWE, although I also have a big contract and the schedule of dates I have is good. And right now it's hard because I want more in AEW. Now also that Roosh is in... We feel the pressure that we want to get more in AEW. People ask me now that Triple H is in charge creatively in WWE, if I'll go back there. A lot of things are said, right? I don't want to talk much. But that's right. Triple H gave me the opportunity. He supported me a lot in my NXT career. When I went up to the main roster, he was supporting me. And when I asked for my release, I talked to him. 
and told him that I wanted to look for more opportunities. We had very good talks, and I got on very well with him. And well, he told me, here's my number. I want you to be in contact with me. Right now, I don't want to say if I've had communication with him or not, because people, legal stuff, since let's just say that if I said here that he already contacted me, he could have problems, so I won't talk about that. But it's easy. If he wants to communicate with me, my wife works for him, and the communication is there. It's immediate with him. But I don't think that should create legal problems or anything like that. I am still in AEW. I don't know what's going to happen. Many things are expected. I don't know what happens this Friday. I could have a new mask in my showcase, but nobody knows. Imagine that I arrive and I lie down on the canvas and I tell number 10, cover me. And one, two, three. See you there. Bye. Imagine what people would say. Let's wait and see what happens on Friday. I need to think about it. Either I take him off the mask. This translation is not great. Uh, or I leave AEW. So that's what he's referring to there. He was scheduled for a mask versus career match with Preston Vance of the Dark Order on Friday. That was set for Rampage. That match ended up not happening. Uh, but Tony Khan wanted to lean into all the gossip about Andrade being unhappy and possibly leaving to go back to WWE, which he was never going to let him do. Uh, but that's why they made the match. They wanted to capitalize on, I guess, all the, the chatter about Andrade. And I thought it was smart to lean into it with the stipulation that they did. But, you know, talking about Triple H and insinuating that you've had contact with him about possibly going back to the company... Whether he has or he hasn't, and I believe that he absolutely does want to go back to WWE. You know, even though he's talked about liking the AEW schedule more and how brutal the WWE one was, I think he absolutely would go back there right now if he was free. It, not even a question in my mind. If you've got Triple H between door number one and Tony Khan between, behind door number two, he's taking door number one. But my issue is this. We already have MJF going on AEW television every week, talking about his contract expiring in 2024 and how he might go to WWE and, hey, Paul, and, hey, Nick, what's going on, right? And Nick Khan is the better Khan than Tony Khan. Now you have another AEW star openly talking about the same exact thing, even if it was part of a storyline to promote his match on Rampage. All this does is make AEW look second rate. MJF doing it is one thing. It's part of his gimmick. But do they really need multiple stars publicly talking about how they might go to WWE and how much they love Triple H? You know, AEW is number two. They will always be number two in the pecking order. They will never overtake WWE ratings-wise or business-wise. It's not going to happen. But they can be a healthy number two. That does not mean they need to throw it in people's faces that they are number two and make it sound like now that Triple H is in charge, it's just a pit stop for these guys before they ultimately go back to WWE. That's not how you want people viewing AEW. Now, Sammy Guevara heard what Andrade said about him. And the mature thing to do would have been to keep his mouth shut. Or approach him in a professional way and try to talk it out in private. Sammy is a very immature person. And instead of being the bigger man and keeping his thoughts to himself, or, or again, keeping it private, which Andrade did not do, but that doesn't mean that Sammy had to do what he did, he decided to go scorched earth. And he tweeted, You are a jobber, a favor hire, be grateful, bitch. He never named Andrade in the tweet. It was very clear who he was referring to. Andrade thought so. He responded, he said, I said it to your face. If you had a problem with me and you said nothing, I won't beat your ass because I'm a professional. Don't be scared. When I say something, I name names and I'm not scared to get fired. Hashtag Sammy. I don't think he gets how this whole hashtag thing works. So Sammy fired back. You didn't say shit to me, you liar. But here's some truth, you ungrateful prick. You would be jobless if it wasn't for your dad-in-law. Are you really mad at me or are you mad at yourself for failing to get over for a second time? Just go back to WWE like we all know you want to and fuck off. Ricky Starks saw all of this and he tweeted and then quickly deleted what I'm sure a lot of AEW talent were probably thinking. He said, man, can my co-workers just shut the fuck up for a minute? 
You want to see how to do social media well, you watch Ricky Starks. <laughs> Nothing will ever top his reply to Brian Cage. Uh, it was actually one year ago, this week, before their Philadelphia street fight. Uh, I think it was on Rampage. Cage, Brian Cage at the time tweeted, Where's the Philly street fight at? At Starkman Jones. And Ricky wrote back... <laughs> Ricky just writes back and he goes, In Philly, you big dumb bitch. <laughs> I, Brian Cage never recovered from that. As far as I'm concerned, he never recovered from that. That was the last match that he had on AEW television. Legitimately, I think until battle the, the Battle Royal of Grand Slam a few weeks ago. That was the last time we saw Brian Cage in a match on AEW television. See, now that's how you use social media. This, this was just embarrassing. You know, the two of them aren't even in a program. It was not part of an angle. Because all the fans just assume, of course, everything is a work. Oh, it must be a work. It's not a work. There are different versions as to what happened next. One version is that Andrade attacked Sammy at the building without any warning or any anything at all. He landed two punches, which didn't do any damage because Sammy looked fine on TV that night. And Andrade was sent home. In that version, Sammy did not fight back. He didn't throw a single punch, which is why he was on television and he was wrestling in the main event. He even won the match for his team that night. Another version of the story is that Andrade spun Sammy around by the arm. Sammy shoved him. And Andrade landed two punches before it got broken up. That person said that Sammy was just reacting to being, you know, attacked. And that Chris Jericho pushed for Sammy not to be punished because he never threw a punch. Meltzer says that after their Twitter spat, management talked to both of them, and they both agreed there would be no fighting. Andrade was told straight up, you will not be fired if you fight. So if that's what you're trying to do here, it's not going to work. You'll be sent home, you'll be fined, but you will not be fired. And Andrade was said to have agreed to that, which is kind of wild, actually. You're going to go to somebody and go, look, if you come to the building and you punch this fucking guy in the face... You will not be fired. <laughs> right? So, like, Andrade probably makes pretty good money. He's probably thinking, wait a minute. You're telling me that if I come to work and I punch this guy in the face, I'm not going to be fired? You'll you'll just find me and send me home? Sweet. I Hey, if somebody would have come to me one, once upon a time, I could think of a few people I didn't like who I used to work with. If you told me, hey, uh, Solo Monster, come over here. I just want you to know, if you come to work today and you punch that guy in the face as hard as you can, I just want you, I want to warn you, you will not be fired. <laughs> I'd be like, okay. Like, the whole the whole idea of this is just completely absurd. So, so again, allegedly that's what Andrade was told. And Andrade was said to have agreed there would be no fight. And security was told in advance to be on, on the lookout, just be on the ready, just in case. Apparently, the AEW security crew in real life is about as useful as their security geeks on TV. During the day, Andrade was said to have hid in the hallway and waited until Sammy walked by. I'm, I'm trying to picture this in my head, and it gets more ridiculous the more I visualize. It's like the spitter from Seinfeld hiding in the bushes. So when Sammy walked by, Andrade ambushed him from behind. He punched him twice, and then he got sent home. So that's yet another version of events. Pick whichever version you want to believe. The consistent thread here is that Andrade is the one who instigated the physicality, which is why he was the one who got sent home and not Sammy. This is not the first time Sammy Guevara has been involved in a backstage altercation. It was only two months ago. That Eddie Kingston took a swing at him, or, or pie-faced him, or tried to, again, whatever version of that you want to believe. And Eddie got suspended two weeks for that. Sammy seems to have a knack for really pissing people off. You notice that? In the initial TMZ story that broke uh, on Wednesday, they said several wrestlers are pissed at Sammy for publicly airing personal or private issues. And things just boiled over at the arena. Now, in this case, it was Andrade who started it. He's the main guilty party in this situation. He gossiped when he said he hates gossip. And then he went to work with the intent of assaulting Sammy Guevara and probably trying to get himself fired. Was he really that angry at Sammy or did that have more to do 
with the way that he behaved that he was trying to get fired so he could go back to WWE. Probably a little bit of both. Sammy sassed him on social media, and yes, I think he was trying to get fired. I think both of those things can be true. Sammy is hardly an innocent party in this. He ran his mouth, he made things worse, when he should have kept things private, especially when we are only a few weeks removed from the worst PR nightmare in the history of this company. Everybody should be on their best behavior right now. Even if they have to bite their lip, because this is the last thing that AEW needs. But when you are dealing with children, this is what happens. CM Punk was right about one thing. He was working with children. This whole thing is a complete mess. How are you going to suspend Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks, who allegedly did not throw any punches in their backstage incident, and suspend them and investigate? And yet Sammy Guevara is involved in yet another situation, a very similar situation, and is not only in the main event that night on TV, they put him over. And they have the Jericho Appreciation Society carry him up on their shoulders to close out the show like he just won the world title. How was he even allowed to go out there? Even if he didn't throw a single punch, he is as responsible for what happened as anybody by shooting his mouth off on social media when he should have known better. And he is rewarded by not only being in the main event, but going over. Sammy should have known better than to lash out the way that he did because this could not have happened at a worst possible time. It's like going to a funeral. You see somebody there who owes you money. You walk up to them and you make a whole scene right next to the casket. There's a time and a place for these things. That ain't it. This is not the time for more drama. And it's something that Tony Khan needs to get a handle on because this cannot keep happening. They're becoming a punchline, this company. We went three years of AEW without hearing about stuff like this. Only now does it seem to be happening with more frequency. What's changed? I think people have gotten comfortable. I think people have gotten a little too comfortable around Tony Khan. He needs to make it clear this type of stuff is not going to be tolerated. And if he already has, then they obviously don't have any respect for him. They're laughing at him. They see him as a lightweight. That's why the CM Punk stuff was so damaging and why I went off on it the way that I did. The sight of him sitting there next to Tony, cutting him off, chowing down on his muffins, the look on Tony's face. He looked like he was so far out of his league that night. That was more damaging than any punches that were thrown after the scrum was over. He needs to budget for social media training for his roster, probably sit in on some of those training sessions himself. But it goes beyond social media. There are differing reports about when Andrade's contract is up. One version has it that next June is when it's up. Another version has it as the summer of 2024. They can fine him. They can suspend him without pay. But if he's got a lot of time left on his deal... They need to figure out what they want to do with him. Because if he really does not want to be there, and he is actively looking to try to find ways to get out of his contract, beating up people he doesn't like is not going to fly. I would send him home and let him sit out the rest of his deal. Put him on ice for a while. And then when his deal is up, he can do whatever he wants. But Tony Khan might not want to give him a paid vacation to sit home for the next 18 months. If he is that miserable and he wants out... Make him buy out the rest of his contract. Same way WWE did with the British Bulldog. When he left for WCW after Montreal, he wanted to leave. They made him buy out the remainder of his contract. I think it was like $150,000 or something. Make him buy out the rest of his deal, wash your hands, and be done with him. They don't need the drama. 